his art, his creativity paints a stunning canvas. If chess is science, his original ideas and intuitive play question many a hypothesis. And if chess is a sport, his fighting spirit and passion over the board brings in the adrenaline. He is the 2017 World Cup winner. He's a former Blitz champion, world champion. He's also won several elite events, including the Sinkfield Cup, Norway Chess, Krenke Chess, Waikanze, Tal Memorial, to name a few. And he returns to Gibraltar as the 2018 winner. We are privileged to have with us the one and only Levon Aronian. Welcome back to Jib Lev. Thank you. How is it to be back here? It's great, you know, where the whole Europe people are shaking here. There is sun and there is uh, daylight at six o'clock. It's wonderful. Great. Now, the tournament's about to begin. We're going to start the Masters soon. What's the general feeling when you return to an event as the defending champion? General feeling is, uh, especially when it comes to Gibraltar um, tournament, is you want to start on, on a good note, because this is the first event of the year and you want to have a good, tur good tournament. And generally, it, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's a fresh start. It's very exciting. So uh, I, th there is no better place to start the year, I think. That's really nice to hear. Now, Lev, there's been a sort of a shift in the chess calendar of the very elite players in the world. There was a time when this was a very decided calendar. You played amongst each other. Um, there were these closed events that happened, but we see more and more elite players participating in open events like Gibraltar. What do you think is the reason for that? The reason is, I think the elite players are tired of playing against each other. We want some excitement. Some action. Yeah, we want to face other players. We want to see, uh, you know, uh, what, what does it feel like to, to play some risky op riskier openings, you know, to try to win more with black. So I guess that's why the elite players like to play in open tournaments. And, you know, uh, we normally get accused to say, oh, they all play against each other, but that's not our design. We're, we, we like to be open and that's why I think tournaments like Gibraltar Chess, I Love Man is, is something that we all look forward to. Right now and in these events when there is a no set players list and you don't really know who you'll be playing against, what's the preparation like for such an event? You have to try to be fresh generally, you know, just to play lots of blitz. Just Useful. I think that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. Generally, you you have to prepare cre creative. You know, you have to uh, be more open to new ideas in the openings. I think to to be having a good tournament here. To be open to taking more risks. I guess. Right. Uh, now also give us some insight, Lev, a player like you, one of the elite players of the world, when you're deciding your calendar of the year, what are the factors that come into play to decide what tournaments you play in and what you don't play in? Well, uh, most of the things are decided with the World Championship cycle, because you want to be part of it. That's like the most important. But if you're not a part of it, then you kind of uh, choose to play somewhere where you really like to be, I guess. And also the tournaments that uh, respect you, you know. I guess that's, that's what's uh, the most important for, for chess players. How big a motivation is it for you to fight for the World Championship? Uh, well, that's something I'm going to do till I can play chess. <laughs> something that uh, I live for. I mean, not really succeeding. So this uh, sentiment is very active. It's something I, I want to dedicate myself to uh, till I succeed. So basically, that's, that's what I do. Right now, just taking that thread a little forward, um, Lev, you've won so many, so many tournaments, but the candidates remain that elusive event for you. With the experience that you've had, 
and you look back at it and you analyze, what is it that you think has not clicked so far? In some candidates I was too prepared and some of them I wasn't <laughs> prepared at all. So I think there are different factors. But, uh, you know, you try to change things and, and then uh, to some people it comes more natural, you know, playing in, uh, well in such event. To me, <laughs> it, it doesn't come naturally. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to change and fine tune the ways in order to uh, play well in the candidates tournament. I think as, as of today, I know what I need to do, but uh, qualifying there is, is going to be a, a difficult task for this year. Right, now the, the popular belief and the popular opinion is that you and Fabiano are the toughest challengers for Magnus. What do you think is the reason that separates the two of you to the rest of your colleagues? I, I think uh, the fact that I get uh, this respect is because, well, I won many, many tournaments uh, and some of them were ahead of Magnus and some of them were I won against him. I guess that's uh, that's what uh, makes my fans uh, positive. I personally believe that uh, I can play well against Magnus, uh, but it, it requires a lot of uh, attention because he, he's one of those players that is always there. You know, he's waiting for a mistake. He, he knows. Uh, he knows that the people are not going to uh, play continuously well because that's what his strength his his average move is much stronger than anybody else's average move so i guess the, the people think uh, that i i can be strong because i am willing to take risks and i'm willing to adapt and i'm willing to learn new things of course when i count the opportunities that i've missed against uh, magnus I could write a book about it, but <laughs> we look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> but I would be a very depressive book, so I wouldn't do that. Hopefully, with a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I hope for as well. But yeah, I think that's part of style of Magnus. He believes in uh, in the quality of the moves. He believes that even if you're in trouble, if you work hard, you'll be able to come on top. And he benefits from it because he does play really well when he's worse. This entire rating race at the top, it, does this number game, what does this number game mean to you? Well, rating is representative of your current strength. Uh, and it's the most objective way to measure somebody's strength. So it's an important number. And what is your opinion about the current work under the new federation, especially in relation to this new Swiss Grand Tournament that's being planned for a spot at the candidates? Well, I'm very excited about the new FIDE because I think finally we have uh, people who play chess themselves in the federation and who understand the players more. And of course, one example is the, this Grand Swiss which is a great idea in my opinion, just uh, to give a chance to every player to qualify to the candidates tournament. The only thing that we're missing, I think, because of the FIDES contract with, uh, about the wildcard, I think uh, wildcard doesn't belong to the world championship cycle. We need to get rid of it and then we'll have a very, very good system. That's very interesting, especially coming from you who has had a wild card spot at the candidates. Yes, well, I've got a wild card, but I don't think uh, I deserved it. I was just lucky uh, because my country uh, loves chess. Uh, it was between me and Kramnik at that moment. So, I mean, I cannot say I completely didn't deserve it, but uh, generally uh, we shouldn't have that favoritism in the game of chess. I'm sure your fans would strongly disagree with what you just said. Uh, talking about your country, uh, Lev, you're 
termed as, as a national treasure in Armenia. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, in 2017, when you got married, the then president, uh, Mr. Sargusian, I hope I'm pronouncing Correct. his name correctly. He was there. He was the godfather at your yes. wedding. Tell us a bit about that, about chess in Armenia and the chess revolution that, in a big way, you're responsible for. Yeah, there is a lot of love towards chess. I think it comes from the times of uh, when Tigran Petrosian uh, became world champion. Uh, then we had uh, Rafael Vahanian, who was a very good player. So it kind of, uh, it will, it's in the system of uh, Armenian people to love uh, the game and to play in the parks. Uh, yeah, I did help it by winning the World Cup, <laughs> I have to say. And then we had this uh, tremendous success with the Olympiads and the national team. Uh, I can say that uh, our uh, president, uh, Sargisian, uh, our uh, previous president, uh, loved chess. He played uh, many times. He, he, he has beaten the Lumjin of many, many times. <laughs> I remember when they played. Uh, so many people, also in current Armenia, with the different uh, government, love chess. So. I hope uh, uh, we'll be able to keep that level because uh, it's something that is kind of a dream when you walk on the street and you can be respected as a chess player. I was just going to ask, do you get recognized a lot on the streets in Yerevan? Yes, oh, almost every time I'm out. One time I had to visit a friend and I decided to bring my dog along. And I took a taxi. It was kind of a Monday, and I put him on my lap, you know, uh, because otherwise he gets nervous. Anyway, so we're on the way. The taxi driver doesn't recognize me. He asks me what you do. I say, well, I'm a chess player, but he doesn't. It doesn't connect. Anyway, so then we're stuck in some sort of a traffic. At some point, there was a little incident. And my dog gets nervous. So I opened the window. I put him out for him to breathe and look at the things. So we go slowly. They see the dog, the people passing cars. They see the dog. They love the dog. And then they see me and they recognize me. And they start talking, asking about me. So one car, second car, third car. And then the taxi driver goes, Oh my God, what a famous dog. They even <laughs> recognize the owner. So That's so. fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so he understood that my dog is very famous. <laughs> right, now you also mentioned about the big success that the Armenian team has had. Uh, the national team led by you has won Olympic medals, European championship, uh, the Armenian Eagles were also the Pro Chess League champions. Yeah. What, is, uh, what do you think is the reason that, that the team is so successful at team events, despite often not being the favorites on paper? Uh, generally, I think many Armenian players are underrated. So they... Uh, because as a, as a nation, we tend to get carried away at some point. We get some success and then we're like, yeah, well, the world is ours. <laughs> so, and then uh, our rating drops, but we're very good players, as uh, the team showed with uh, uh, Gabriel Sargisian, Vladimir Kopian, Sergei Movsesian, uh, Tigran Petrosian, and uh, the other players. We won uh, three Olympiads, the World Championships. So. It shows uh, for the strength of the players. Yeah, generally the Armenian players uh, and also players from Caucasus have this special style. We like to maneuver a lot. We don't like to agree to draws. We like to play long games. So there is this common uh, something that unites players from Armenia, Azerbaijan and Georgia. Right, this same spirit of fearlessness over the board. Uh, now, Lev Karyakin once said he, he related your style of play, he called you the messy of chess, talking about your style of play. 
Did he did he say he was messy or or? He Maybe said, he meant that you're really messy on yes. the board, but we're gonna go with Lionel Messi for right now. And Vishy said that you're a D4 player who plays in the style and treats it like E4. Gary said that the world is a better place when Lev is playing well, but he also said that Levon faces his losses with a smile, mm -hmm. and he believes that to be the world's best player, you need to hate losing. The NN called you the David Beckham of chess. <laughs> Which out of these is the most flattering or the most amusing for you? Well, being compared to probably the greatest living football player in history. Wait, David Beckham or Messi? Messi. <laughs> 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 That's very flattering. Uh, yeah, I mean, generally, uh, I get lots of compliments for my play. Uh, but the fact is, I don't like losing, I don't like losing at all, but I try to uh, pretend uh, I'm okay with it. <laughs> the thing that I believe in, that when you lose, you have to respect your opponent. You have to uh, and, you know, appreciate the fact that he played a good game. So, uh, but generally, uh, since I, normally come back with wins after losses. It shows my attitude towards the losses themselves. I prefer wins. Absolutely, yeah, you are known for your wonderful sportsmanship. Now, when one studies your games, Lev, one gets a feeling of, of beauty in chess. What is it about the game that brings you pure joy? There are certain things that I really enjoy the, the most in the game of chess. I love maneuvering a lot. I love when you uh, can transfer your pieces in a nice way. Uh, I love uh, domination, especially the, some brand of domination, which I think was uh, branded by Boleslavsky, uh, by some of the most beautiful domination in the game of chess, is when you attack a minor piece and it cannot move when you attack the minor piece and you dominate the position so much that you win it. Uh, there are many, many beautiful things, but one thing I can say that I don't stop getting amused by the amount of beauty there is in the game of chess. I, I see it every day and it's something that inspires me all the time. Many forms of art, are something that really uh, affects me, just uh, in a positive way, or you know, literature, or and same way I can say about chess. So, I uh, yeah, I can say I'm very romantic. <laughs> Although nowadays I think for most of the people it's it's sign of being vulnerable. But uh, I don't feel vulnerable. I'm, I'm there to fight, but also to appreciate beauty. You've also been in the top 10 for a very, very long time. For a player of your level, what are the biggest challenges involved with being one of the best players in the world? I think biggest challenges when you start uh, you know, losing is the way to come back. That's the uh, biggest challenge because you need to change things. I always get inspired by people like Boris Gelfand, Vladimir Kramnik, and because uh, they always try to learn new things. And Vasily Ivanchuk, my most favorite player. Mine too. <laughs> I think I've learned that uh, to be to have more fighting spirit, because. Uh, the younger guys, uh, especially Magnus, who started this. Uh, I mean, he basically copied everything that Bobby Fischer did. He didn't really start it, but he copied Bobby and uh, Karpov's approach. Uh, is to play chess without really thinking about the objective uh, assessment of the position. That's very important just to play good moves without really thinking that 
I'm better, I'm worse, or uh, I want I want something. Playing chess without wanting is is very important. Have you also studied a lot from chess books? Uh, I studied a lot from chess books when I was little. I think I've read uh, at least 200 books till I turned, uh, I would say, 17. I've read one after another. I actually love to read. I, I read uh, at least one or two books a month. And is there one particular chess book that had a huge impact on you that you would highly recommend? Oh yeah, one of my most favorite books was uh, actually it's 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 a modern book because people always say, oh you know this Turing fifty three or I don't know Alekhin's two hundred games and things like this, but they are all great. All of those books are great, but the most profound thing that the book that was uh, influencing. The way I think was Rosen's uh, chess, Seven Deadly Sins, because uh, it talks about the subjects that I knew were there, but I couldn't express it. And I always wanted to write some, some, something with uh, Jonathan, something like an improved version from a different perspective. But we're both very busy, so maybe one day we'll do it. That's a great recommendation that's actually been spoken about a lot by the top players right now. Um, Lev, if you could take three qualities from any of your colleagues, three different colleagues, you could include yourself in this list and sort of create this, this uber chess player, this mutant X version of a chess player. What are these three qualities and from whom would you take them? Mm, well, I would take Fabiano's diligence. Okay. I would take uh, Magnus's attention to detail, you know, and precision. The swag, <laughs> the swagger, <Okay>. my swagger. <laughs> so that is the mutant X chess player. Yes. It would be diligence, precision, and swagger. That's yes. what you need. That's great. And now, finally, what is your professional and personal goal for 2019? 2019, I would like to have a similar year like I had in 2017. So a good year with many wins. And personal, uh, well, um, I'm, I'm so happy generally in life that it's difficult to ask for more. That I just want my family to be healthy and, and uh, my the people close to me to to enjoy what they're doing so that's that's what i want and on that wonderful note we're going to end this interview thank you so much it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you and we wish you all the best for the gibraltar masters thank you thank you love.